You've been presenting uh, a study on Vemurafamib, so it's a RAF inhibitor, uh, and the analysis of long-term response. And this, is, of course, is in patients with BRAF mutated, BRAF V600 mutated um, disease. Uh, it was an open-label study. Now, can you tell me about the study? Uh, it's quite big, over 3,000 patients. So what did you do and what did you find? Yeah, that's an early access program, so it's an EAP and therefore the number of patients treated in various countries is very high. We call this study, it's a real life study, because patients were not treated under the conditions of a clinical trial, but in a real world setting. And the findings are quite interesting because so many patients have been treated, there's certain subgroup analysis feasible. And you know, we found out that patients with long duration of response, as defined as more than 12 months, have the following prognostic factors. It's typically patients with low LDH measured in the serum of the patients. It's typically patients with no brain metastases and patients who are belonging to M1A stage of disease, which means this is patients typically with relatively low tumor load who are doing well. And these patients can have very long responses over years. Right, of course, they were all uh, treatment naive. They'd not had a RAF inhibitor before. Uh, but they weren't all second line, first line. What, what were these patients? These were first line patients. You are absolutely right. But I was presenting at this meeting um, data on second line as well. So we had four clinical trials to report on Vemorafenib. The first one was a phase one, you know which was presented already in the year uh, uh, 2011. The second one was the so-called BRIM2 and then BRIM3, which was bringing the drug to the market. And this is the early access program. So there's four clinical trials available. And we have a meta-analysis of all the clinical trials, which show exactly the same prognostic parameters. Right now, significantly, you've been talking here about duration of response. And you've got a big increase in duration of response. What did you get? And what's the significance of this? It's a big increase, but still, the, the numbers of patients are quite small at one year, aren't they? Yeah, you know, you're right, I agree, but on the other hand, we need to say the question was if there's long-term survival on the horizon, and we figured out that the long-term survival and the longest data which is available is the three-year survival is in the range of 30%, three zero, not 13, one three, which means one third of the patients are still alive after three years. And, you know, some other colleagues, you know, were saying, well, with targeted therapies, everybody is dying quickly because there's resistance, but obviously there is people who don't have resistance. So you're beginning to show there is a tail of survivors with these targeted therapies. You know, if we were using the word tail, we need to be sure that this is a plateau. The tail, yes, it's true, but we don't know if this is a plateau. I would love to see the four and five year survival data. If four and five year survival is in the same range, we can talk about the uh, the plateau and then you know the tail would have a clinical impact. Right, so in this study with Vemurafenib uh, initially then, what are the figures very briefly that have come out of this that you would pass on to doctors? So there is 10-12% there is of patients you know still under treatment after three years, which means that's a reasonable number of patients who don't have a progressive disease. There's another 10% of patients still under treatment who had before a progressive disease. So it's treatment beyond progression. That was a theme which was never touched in the past. But we know from tyrosine kinase inhibitors and also from the competitor, the Dabrafenib, that this matters and these patients still have a benefit. So there might be minor progressive disease, you know, just one new lesion. So it's not clinically meaningful if they progress, so we decided to continue. And I think this is a main, main finding. But still we need to say, Longer duration of more than 12 months is only a small subset of patients, not more than one third of the patients. <laughs> and uh, your study with Dabrafenib, how did that go? Uh, we, we evaluated the BREAK3 trial, and I was a global PI of this clinical trial uh, for long-term responses. 31% of the patients are still alive after three years. So the figures for Vemurafenib and for Dabrafenib are almost the same. You cannot compare the trials directly because uh, for Vemorafenib it was phase one and phase two where we can report the three-year survival and for Dabrafenib it was a phase three trial. So, but it's almost the same and this looks uh, quite good. So what's the take-home message on these RAF inhibitors for doctors? 
Yeah, the take-home message is the lower the tumor load is, the better the outcome of the patients is. And so this is against the dogma which is in the room if you treat melanoma patients. Because typically we are arguing that patients with high tumor load are the best candidates for BRAF inhibitor treatment, which is true because they might have a nice response. But the best outcome is always in the same group of patients, those with low tumor load and favorable prognostic factors. Which means, you know, for first-line treatment, you can either use the BRAF inhibitors or you can use immunotherapy. It's uh, useful in every group of patients. But in the sequencing of therapy, because of these longer-term survivals, would you start with a targeted therapy now, do you think, possibly? No, I would say we simply don't know it. And there's a consensus among most, but not all, key opinion leaders in melanoma that, you know, there is no data available at this point of time which points to one direction or the other one, which means BRAF inhibitors first or um, uh, the uh, immunotherapeutic agents. But I need to say something which is very important, because now we are facing single-agent treatment with daprofenib and vimorafenib, mm -hmm. and single-agent treatment is no longer standard of care. It is a combo of BRAF and MEK inhibition. And in our new German guideline, which will be released shortly, you know, it's very clear that only the combo is used. And of course, we've got quite a, a bit of data on combinations. Absolutely. So that's the way to go, you reckon, at the moment? Absolutely.